Hello developers. If you followed the HTML structure video you already know, this layout is built for scroll-based storytelling. But what brings this structure to life is the CSS. This is where the layout gets its rhythm, where each section feels connected, and where we start preparing for all the smooth transitions powered by GSAP. In this part of the series, I'll walk you through the CSS from top to bottom, explaining why each part exists, how it fits the scroll logic, and how we're thinking ahead for JavaScript animations. Let's begin. We start by defining the font face for the veneer font. This sets the foundation for a vintage brand identity and is used specifically in headings and logos. It helps differentiate brand-related text from body content. Next, we define all global colors using the root selector. By storing colors as variables, we can maintain theme consistency across the entire layout and easily update the color scheme in one place if needed. Then we apply a global reset using the universal selector. This ensures all elements start from a consistent baseline, removing browser default margins and paddings which can otherwise break layout calculations or scroll-based positioning. In the body section, we apply the base font, background color, and text color. This forms the visual base of our project and aligns with the tone set by the HTML structure. The font improves readability, while the background sets a neutral canvas for the rest of the layout. Now we move to the header. The header is made sticky, which means it stays visible at the top even during scroll. This is essential for maintaining navigation accessibility as users explore the long form layout. It also has a custom border width that we will animate using JavaScript during page load, helping us add visual flair right at the top. We define the header's inner container using a flex layout. This allows us to cleanly position the logo and navigation links on opposite sides, maintaining balance on desktop devices. The logo uses the veneer font for branding and adds a handcrafted feel. Navigation links use smooth hover effects and transitions to make the interface feel responsive and dynamic. We define a hamburger icon, but hide it by default. This icon is revealed only on smaller screens. It's interactive and will be toggled with JavaScript to show or hide the mobile menu. The mobile menu is designed to be revealed on interaction. It uses a different background and sits below the header, appearing with a layout optimized for vertical stacking. This structure directly supports responsive navigation controlled via JavaScript. A media query is added for smaller screens. Inside it, we hide the desktop navigation and show the hamburger icon. We also define a condition for the mobile navigation to display only when the show class is toggled using JavaScript. Next, we define the vertical social media sidebar. It's positioned absolutely and reserved on the left edge. This layout ensures it doesn't interfere with the main content, but remains accessible as a fixed layer. The individual icons inside are prepared for scroll-based animation and hover interaction. A second media query repositions this sidebar to the bottom on mobile devices. This shift ensures that we retain access to social links without compromising vertical screen space. JavaScript uses this area during initial load animations and border reveal effects. We then define the main section layout. Left padding is added to accommodate the fixed sidebar, ensuring that content doesn't get overlapped. This padding is removed in smaller viewports where the sidebar becomes horizontal. Next comes the hero section. It is visually dominant and designed to center both content and the bottle image. The bottle and heading elements are hidden initially and animated into view using GSAP. This setup requires the hero section to be relatively positioned and overflow to be hidden to contain animated elements. Inside the hero, we place the heading in two separate lines. Each line is animated individually using timeline sequencing in JavaScript, so we break it into spans to enable precise control. We also define a wrapper for the bottle image. This wrapper is the target of multiple scroll-based animations that pin it and transform its rotation and scale as users scroll through different sections. The bottle itself is styled to appear rotated and elevated using drop shadows. JavaScript will progressively rotate and move this element on scroll, so we keep it absolutely positioned and centered. 
We also prepare a decorative stamp that appears above the hero heading. This stamp is animated using scale and offset to give a popping visual impression, adding to the handcrafted feel of the brand. In the responsive media query, we reduce the hero section's height and scale down both the bottle and stamp to ensure clarity on small screens. Now we define the intro section. This section sits right below the hero and contains a heading, subheading, and a list of ingredients. This section marks the transition point where scroll animations begin. Its layout is split into two columns using Flexbox, allowing us to animate the bottle to move between them using scroll-triggered JavaScript. Inside the intro, the left column contains text and a call to action button. The button is designed to draw attention using contrast and hover transitions. The right column is dedicated to ingredients. Each ingredient is structured using a flex row with quantity and description. This makes it easy to maintain spacing and alignment and allows us to apply scroll effects between items. The responsive media query for the intro section stacks everything vertically. This ensures that text and ingredients remain readable on smaller screens and that animations remain unobtrusive. Now we define the timeline section. This section presents historical milestones using a zigzag layout. Each entry has a left column for the year, an image, and a right column for the story. Odd and even entries are styled differently using nth child selectors to alternate layout. This layout helps visually segment the content and supports smooth scroll-based animations. The year and image containers are styled to draw focus. We add slight transformations so that JavaScript can animate them on entry with subtle motion. We then define a media query to stack timeline content vertically. This ensures the section becomes linear and readable on smaller devices. It also disables layout offsets, allowing content to flow naturally on limited width screens. Finally, we style the footer. It uses a dark background and light text to signal the end of the page. Flex layout is used to distribute the logo, navigation, and contact links. This clean structure allows us to wrap up the experience while maintaining consistency with the rest of the site. So this was our CSS walkthrough. Every section, every media query, and every layout choice has a reason, all working together to enable scroll-based animations and a consistent brand identity. In the next video, we'll jump into the real magic, the JavaScript animations powered by GSAP. See you there.